Hi there! In today's video, we're going to learn the broken glass text effect in Photoshop. So let's get started. Let me change the unit to pixels and create a 1280 by 720 pixels document and then hit create. I need to add a texture to this artboard. So let me go to file and then open and locate the texture image from the computer. Now that we have our texture image here, let's click, hold and drag it to our artboard. If you want to practice along, I'm going to add a link to the description for you to download this texture from. All right, now our texture is here, but it's not in the right size. So let's hit Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC to resize it. Let's zoom out so that we could see the handles using which we're going to drag in to resize this image. Once it's resized as per your requirement, either hit enter or click on the tick on top. Also click on the texture thumbnail and rename it texture. Click the create new fill or adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel and choose levels. And you'll find the panel populating just above the layers panel. Change the gamma value, which is the gray slider in the middle to 1.10 and the highlights, which is the white slider on extreme right to 180. This is going to lighten the color intensity of the texture. Next in line is adding a gradient layer on top of all layers. So to do that, click the create new fill or adjustment layer button at the bottom of the layers panel and from the drop down list, select gradient. In the pop up window, change the style to radial and check the dither box. At this point, the dark tone is in the center, but we want to lighten the center and darken the areas around the corner. So to do that, check the reverse option as well and then update the scale to 250. Now click on the gradient drop down and double click on the left slider and enter the color code D6, D6, D6 and hit OK. Now double click on the right slider and enter the color A6, A6 and A6 and hit OK. Now with the gradient fill layer selected, change its blending mode to color burn and that's the effect we are looking for. Now grab the text tool and click once on the artboard. The font size is too big. Let's bring it down to 48 points. Let's type in broken in uppercase and let's bring it to the center. I'm going to use Poppins extra bold font for this one. Use it if you have it. If you don't, you can always use any other chunky font and it should do the job. Let me also increase the font size to about 55 points. Let's also change the font color. So select the text and double click on the foreground color and use white as the text color and hit OK. Now with the text layer selected, change its fill value to zero. And with the text layer still selected, hit Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC twice to make two copies of the text layer. Now go to the original text layer and double click to reveal the layer style panel. Click on the drop shadow option on the left. In the settings, change the blend mode to vivid light. Now double click on the color palette or color picker and update the color code to F2 DE DE. Now update the opacity to 10% and uncheck the use global light box. Now change the angle to minus 19, distance to 11, let the spread be 0, but change the size to 20. We need to add another drop shadow effect to this, so click the plus sign at the right of the drop shadow tab and then select the drop shadow in the bottom and in the settings panel, 
update the blend mode to color burn click on the color picker and update the color to 837777 update the opacity to 30 percent ensure that the use global light box is unchecked and change the angle to 107 now update the distance to 12 spread to 2 and size to 10 and then hit OK. So basically we've used this text layer to add the drop shadow. Next we've got to use the top two text layer to add the glass effect that will sit on top of this drop shadow. Now double click the broken copy layer and then select the bevel and emboss option from the left. In the settings let the style be inner bevel and technique smooth change the size to 3 and angle to 120 degrees modify the shadow mode blending to overlay and then click on the color palette and change the color code to E4 EE and EE before hitting OK now click on the contour option right under bevel and emboss click on the contour drop down and then you will have to click on the small cog on the right and change the option to text only and then select the cove deep option from the list check the anti-aliased box and let the range be 100% next click on inner shadow option on the left in the settings change the blend mode to screen and then click on the color palette and update the color code to E2, E2, and E2. Now update the opacity to 10% and also uncheck the use global light box if checked. Let the angle be 90 degrees. Update the distance to 2, choke to 0, and size to 13. Next, click on Inner Glow option on the left and in the settings, update the Blend Mode to Overlay, Opacity to 30%. Click on the Color Picker and update the Color Code to F1, EC, EC. Update Technique to Precise. Let the Choke be 0 and Size now check the anti-aliased box and update the range to 35. Now click on the gradient overlay and in the settings check the dither box and then update the blend mode to soft light. Also update the opacity to 50% and style reflected. Change the angle to 105 and then scale to 150%. At this time also check the reverse box. And now click the gradient box to create the gradient fill. To create the gradient you will need to click below the gradient bar to add color stops. And uh, when you click each color stop you can change its color and location values. So let's double click on the color slider on the extreme left which is at 0% location and enter the color code 252321 and then hit OK. Now click on the color slider on the extreme right which is at 100% location and enter the color code 252321 and then hit OK. Next, click under the gradient bar close to the 20% zone to add a color stop. Now update the location to 22% and your stop will move accordingly. Now double click on the 22% stop and update the color to 65, 65, 65 before hitting enter.
Next, add another color stop, much like you added the last stop, and change its location to 44%. And then double click on the stop and enter the color code EE, EE, and another EE. And hit enter. You should be able to see how adding these different colors to our gradient is affecting our text and lifting the effect progressively. So add another stop and uh, change its location to 69% and then double click on the stop and enter the color code 585858 and hit enter. Let's add the second last color stop and change its location to 70%, which is very close to the last one. And then double click the stop and enter the color code EE, EE, and another EE. And hit enter. And finally, create the last color stop and change its location to 83%. And then double click the stop and enter the color. 60 and press enter now hit ok to close the gradient panel and then hit ok once again to close the layer style panel at this point ensure that the layer fill value of the broken copy is zero now double click on the broken copy 2 and add a bevel and emboss it should already have the last used settings applied to it, so just change the size to 5. Then check the anti-aliased box. The blending option of the shadow is already set to overlay, so let's not change that. However, click on its color picker and update the color code to D0, E8, E9 before hitting OK. Also, add a contour and check the anti-aliased box if it is not checked already. Basically, what anti-aliasing does is that it smooths the jagged edges of a selection by softening the color transition between edge pixels and background pixels. So, lastly, update the range to 70% and hit OK. So, our glass effect is almost done. What we need to do is to create the broken glass effect now. So grab the polygonal lasso tool and click the add to selection icon in the options bar. Here we need to create sharp shapes over some parts of the text just to mimic the appearance of broken areas. So choose your areas from the letters. When you're done with the selection, hold the Option key on a Mac or Alt key on a PC and click the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Now hold the Option key again on a Mac or Alt key on a PC and drag the mask to each of the text layers. So at this point, you'll find that the areas you selected have been taken off from the letters. Now we need to create the shattered pieces of the gloss. So with the polygonal lasso tool again, create some more sharp selections of smaller scattered shapes around the text to create the shattered pieces. Once you're done with that, create a new layer on top of all layers. Call it pieces or any other name of your choice. Now grab the brush tool and click on the foreground color to reveal the color picker and select the color white here and hit OK. Now click once on each piece and it should be filled with white. And since we've already made a selection, the brush will not really affect the rest of the area, so don't really worry about that. Now press Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC to get rid of the selection. With the pieces layer selected, hit Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC twice. So you should have two more copies of this layer. Next, come to Broken Copy 2 layer and right-click and select Copy Layer Style. So, whatever effects we've applied to it gets copied using this command. And because we want the shattered pieces to also look similar to the letters, we need to apply the effects to the pieces as well. So, go to Pieces layer and then right-click and select Paste Layer Style. 
Now double click the pieces layer and we need to add the same two drop shadows we added earlier to the original broken layer. So click on drop shadow and all the settings should be intact. So you should find vivid light as the blending mode and the color code should be F2DEDE. Use global light option should be unchecked. Angle should still be minus 19. Distance should be 11 pixels. Spread should be sitting at zero and size should be 20. These are basically the same settings of the drop shadow we used earlier. So we don't even have to change anything here. So click on the second drop shadow option and you shall find the same settings here as well. So blending mode should be color burn and the color should be 837777. Opacity should still be 30%. Angle should be 107 degrees. Use global light should be unchecked. Distance should still be 12, spread 2, and size 10 pixels. So just hit OK. And now with the pieces layer still selected, right click on it and select copy layer style. And then go to pieces copy layer and right click and select paste layer style. Similarly, select the pieces copy to layer and right click and paste layer style. At this point, the shattered pieces should look like broken pieces of the letters. Now go to pieces layer and you see this FX icon on the right. Just right click on it and go to scale effects and change the scale percentage to 50% and hit OK. Similarly, go to pieces copy layer and right click on FX icon and go to scale effects and change the reading to 50% here as well. And lastly, go to pieces copy to layer and right click on FX icon on the right and go to scale effects and change it to 50%. Now to the last step and that is to add a spotlight effect and for that, pick the elliptical marquee tool and click on the center and hold Option key on a Mac or Alt key on a PC and drag out to create an oval shape as illustrated. Now go to the gradient fill layer and click on create a new layer button at the bottom of the layers panel to create a layer above the gradient fill layer. You can rename it Spotlight or just let it stay as it is. It does not really matter. Now go to layer and then new fill layer and then solid color. Rename the layer if you want to. I'm going to just hit OK and it will reveal the color picker. In here, add the color code D6, D6, D6 and hit OK. Now go to filter, then blur and then Gaussian blur and in the pop-up click on convert to smart object option and change the radius to 50 pixels and hit OK. And with the same layer selected, change the blending mode to vivid light and then change its opacity to 10% and your shattered glass effect is ready. All right, guys, that concludes our session today. I hope you've enjoyed it and have learned something new from it. So do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet on Sunday, goodbye and thanks for watching.